Booyaka Show, welcome back to another other episode of If You Can't Handle the Heat, presented by Addison Summers, your boy G Swizz. Looking dapper along my brodo, Jodo. How we doing, Joey? Looking good, Turtle Night Gang. Turtle Night Gang, chains out. Now, we got two local boys here. Just kidding, we're not local. But we do have one honorary local boy with us. First team All-American, Big West Player of the Year, two-time Natty Champ, looking like a three-time Natty Champ. How this year's going so far. We got one local brada, Jakob Tella. Jakob, thanks for so much for hopping on the pod, brother. Yes, so I'm always for having me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> shout out to the Norwegian flag in the back, too. Thanks, you just put it up. You know, I just hey. got to get that like, PR out there. For the whole country you know, of Norway. <laughs> PR for the, You should get a, a half stitch, a stitch of like a Hawaiian flag and a Norwegian flag. That'd be sick. I know. Like, like I thought about it. We'll yeah, see what right. I can get to. But maybe like some Kanaka Maui. Like, uh, the green and the yellow color up there as well. Board shorts, man. You should get some board shorts like that. One half there, one half the other flag. That'd be a smart idea. That would be sick. I'll bring uh, it up. Let's get into it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, let's get into it here, Jakob. First off, congratulations on your second national championship. We didn't get to see each other. Um, I saw him. Well, I saw yeah, him. Yeah, where were you guys? Tournament. Well, we were there at the yeah, after party. Or the, the after hangout. I was at the final four. Yeah, you weren't at anything. I wasn't at the final four. Where was I? Maybe in Bulgaria. I was, no, I was, I was still in Bulgaria. But we just want to say congratulations. Uh, return everyone. Thank you. Um, Thank you very I much. Wanna, Appreciate it. I want to I kind of get into your scheduling here, Jakob. That's how is it? How is it that Hawaii wins two national, now two national championships? Last year was one national championship. Still a bigger, a big deal. Yet you find you yourself <laughs> on a plane to North Carolina to go play these teams. Have you ever asked Charlie how come we're traveling? And I have, there's no offense to the teams that you're playing, but when you're talking about the two time national champions traveling to play teams that I've personally never heard of, probably you guys have never heard of, how does that happen? Have you talked to Charlie about that? That is a great question. I'm not sure. Um, but I think it's still like a cool experience just traveling somewhere that is pretty far away because we're going all the way to Carolina, North Carolina. Um, the same place we played four years ago when both of you guys were there with us. Um, Queens, we baby. Played, like, we played, uh, <laughs> played like the Royal Championship, whatever, we played King and Queens, like all those teams. The Royal Rumble, exactly. And then, um, I don't know, I think it's just cool like traveling over there and like seeing teams that are from a different conference and I guess it's the part of like playing teams that are not in conference and also getting helping with RPI. I'm not sure what that means so yet, but just getting the experience of traveling and going somewhere uh, far away in the middle of nowhere because I have no clue where that, where those, where those cities are. Because you know, for me, I all just know about like West Coast and Hawaii. That's all I know about. Not too familiar with the coast, East Coast. I'm just like lost wherever you go. But that's whatever you don't. Whenever you don't know about Scott, you just gotta say RPI. I say that all the time. Yeah, that's R, and then nobody knows. And then nobody knows what it means. So they what does it even stand for? It's something with the per index. index. Something okay. index. So what does it mean? You should explain what right. it means. Uh, basically, it's a formula. It goes. I think, and I'm gonna get corrected for sure by someone. I think strength of schedule wins against teams under consideration. Uh, wins against like ranked teams. All that stuff gets put into some number, and you get an RPI score. Of some like, all that type of stuff like uh, wins on the road and wins at home. Uh, and I think everything gets kind of like jumbled into this one number into a formula. And yeah, that's but it's really it weird. Comes out because yeah. like last year we had like probably the worst RPI like of the top ten teams. We had like I don't know, probably like ranked like ten. I'm pulling our schedule right now. Like our schedule last year was as you guys know and as you guys talked about too that I saw was that it was like most the most impressive schedule. And I think we started like real low in the RPI, and then we kind of build our way up until like one by like the last week. I just I'm not sure like how that, how they change the RPI like for every week that we play teams, but you know, yeah, it's part of the it's, and we all well, that's that's always schedule. been like, even like when we were there, in our, like the scheduling for Hawaii has always been a little questionable about like who they're scheduling stuff. Because I'm seeing like even UCLA and Stanford and some of those they're scheduling. And I know you guys, obviously you guys are going to get to play the UCLA's and Penn State's and Pepperdine's, but like you don't see those other big schools. They're like getting right into it. It's like Santa Barbara, a lot of Big West MPSF matchups, um, a lot of like big, bigger EIVA and uh, 
Eva and Miva schools playing like the West Coast teams, and Hawaii is like always usually starting off with these these types of matches, typically yeah. historically yeah. in the past few years. Yaka, before I get into my next question here, I want to kind of just read a few of the opponents so our audience here has a better understanding of who we're playing. And don't worry, the, 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 this entire podcast won't just be about your strength of schedule. I know, you, and we'll get into <laughs> personal stuff. It's just something that blows It'll my mind. It'll be good enough. Right? And, yeah. uh, all right, so you played Ball State back-to-back. -back. That makes sense. Final four appearances. They were number two, well, number two, ranked two or three in the country last year. Okay. Then you got St. Francis, Queens, at Belmont Abbey, at Barden. Two at Stanford, okay. Two versus Concordia. Uh, okay, respectable. And then for <laughs> two versus Long Island University. And there's some other respectable schools in there, but I don't know. Is it hard for me as a libero? Obviously, it can be position to position. But is it hard to kind of get motivated for some of those games? Like you go in, and, and, I, and I get it. You don't want to come on here and be like, absolutely not. Like you want to show them respect. But it's a hard one you do. What people don't know, you're traveling about ten hours tomorrow on the on the good. If there's if, if it's just straight shots, about ten hours, and then you got to yep. drive all these places. So you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. You're traveling constantly because you're traveling back back to back to back days to like driving through all these states. Like for you, and I know, remember you used to have like knee pain and whatnot. Is it harder for you to physically and mentally get ready for these games? And does it lead? And that, how do you lead into like? When you actually have like a really big opponent, do you feel like because you guys peaked later in the season? Maybe there's a method to the madness here by Charlie, but do you feel like that that helps? Okay, you get to peak at the right time, or is it hard to kind of get right into it when you have Pepperdine right off the bat? When you have Penn State and UCLA, I think it definitely helps like having those like top tier teams that you play against, like you know who they are and like that they're already like playing really well, and just like from the history of the school itself, it's like one of the best teams in the country, and then. Yeah, like you're saying, like playing other teams that probably like haven't had the best history over the years. Even like we played a lot of new programs last year, like Ebba Waters and I think also LIU was a new program. And I think it's definitely like tough to motivate yourself to play those teams, but that's like the whole challenge too, is like you gotta like kind of drive yourself and find yourself to be motivated for those kind of games because even though like on paper, like they're not the the biggest matchup, you still have to play well and you can never drop yourself down like to the opponent's level because you gotta keep the same level that you have on the team and I think especially for us, like that's something we kind of felt on last year because we played like a lot of those teams who were kind of new in the conferences and we like didn't really know much about them. So it was more for us like kind of finding ourselves and like finding our own motivation and level of engagement as we talk a lot about in the practice gym and with Charlie as well. And that's like that was the biggest challenge for us last year. And I think it can still be difficult this season, like playing teams on the road because you also have the whole factors of traveling and like you say. I've become an old guy now. Like I'm in my fifth year and my knees are running on strings. <laughs> so it's definitely, definitely tough, but it's something for all of us so we can kind of embrace and just work on it collectively to become better. Cause like playing, playing teams that are maybe not like statistically the best in the country. It's so like, you still have to perform well and you still have to outperform your opponent. So. Absolutely. But it's fun. Okay. And, no, I think that's a good point. No matter what, it's not the it's not the player's job to worry about who they're playing. Um, we'll stop throwing shade on uh, the scheduling of UH or not. Hey, that's that's worked, always though. that's worked. always been a thing for UH, and people question it and stuff. And it is what it is. But they uh, they will be playing a lot of some of the top teams. Um, I want to get more into you and the team itself this year. Uh, for those who don't know uh, and aren't familiar with the program, Josh Walker, former assistant. Um, with the UH team, he came in the same year I did, so he was there for seven years. Seven years, yeah. So Maybe eight. So no, I think seven seasons because he uh, came my freshman year, same year as uh, I did. Um, and then he went to Baylor in the off season with the women's uh with the women's program there. Capono Fay takes over his role. I'll ask you, Jakob, what's the biggest thing that Capono as a person has brought to the team um, that you've noticed? That's different from from like previous years. Not not necessarily other people, but just him him as a person. Well, I think Capone as a person is a very humble character, and he always tries his best to help out the players um, and talk about like the technique with his experience. Like with me, he talks about like ways that his setters have been doing like over the years playing professionally, and also just like his regular like he has a lot of knowledge about volleyball and i think he bring he brings a lot to the team now 
and the fact that he was a player like Nalto and go not not throwing set to Josh because Josh didn't play on the team like there wasn't a long time ago since he was there as well and just like having that kind of youth and like kind of fresh experience from playing I think is really valuable on the team especially on the coaching staff and I think definitely Capona is like helping us with the team culture as well because he knows what all that was about early on and he definitely like wants us to be especially the seniors like he definitely has high standards for us like kind of creating that path for the younger guys for the future as well but he's a great guy and we're really really fortunate to have him in the coaching staff yeah Capona's the man I was his roommate sophomore year do you guys still do a board in the locker room if it's saloon what still still doing a board in the locker room well, we're still doing boards that? here and there. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. doing boards. Okay. Yeah, Explain what that it's is. not as frequent as it was when you putting up the inspirational okay. quote. That was... <laughs> <laughs> we're still doing boards here and there. Yeah. Explain what a board is. No, yeah. we. I'm not going to... Like, yeah, define the board. It's long, but basically there's a board uh, in the locker room. I think... I don't know how long ago they started this, but kind of Capono's class was big on this. And so he... Uh, basically everybody's name from the team goes on the board. And there's a topic or a uh, a what's the word? Just, yeah, a question topic. or something. Yeah, some sort of topic, and you have to come up with an answer for every single person on the board. And sometimes it's a little more innocent, and sometimes it's a little more funny and and stuff. And uh, you know, we I think I think you flirt with funny and crossing the lines sometimes. So that's what makes it super funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hilarious. No, but it's we good for one bonding. Board, like in the fall, I think where like Charlie even commented like what is what does that mean? I'm not gonna go into the details of the board and like yeah. you guys what it was, but let's just say we, <laughs> we probably, definitely crossed the line. <laughs> Look it up on Urban Dictionary, Charlie. Yeah. So <laughs> no, he but he was like asking what it was. And we're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> so But it was a good um, one. It was a good one. I want to kind of go into your when I was there versus what I saw when you were there about yourself personally, and then what I saw starting last year. Um, just mm -hmm. the differences in your play and I think your mentality and everything. Were you? And I want to start off with this here. Were you on the court when it was Rado on the right side, Patrick in the middle, Colton on the outside, and sometimes me at libero? They, well, obviously I didn't demand the ball, but you have three big hitters demanding the ball. And in certain situations, you had guys, to be honest, like yelling at you, even including me. There's times where I got on you as well, for sure. Were you ever like, just like having like a WTF or like nervous moment? Like you just like, like on the court, like consistently. Like, obviously you have a free flow, but at the end of the day, you're like, we ever like, I got these guys above me that are just like getting on me do you feel like you could like accomplish what you want to accomplish on the floor and just kind of be relaxed or were you kind of more nervous than you are what would you say now i think definitely the first couple times it happened i got kind of scared especially when it was pat yelling at your face like set me the ball <laughs> Uncle and then i got i definitely got more used to it like over the games and like i don't know i kind of just like looking back because like it kind of stopped like i'm not gonna lie like this year and the past year like when when you and pat and rado like when you all left the program and colton too sometimes then it would be like well now there's like nobody is like giving like saying like okay step in the ball he's like i'm more free to do whatever i want offensively but i actually kind of miss some like sometimes like having guys coming up and like being confident telling me like all right step in the ball i'm gonna crush it no matter what i'm gonna hit the ball as hard as i can and score the point so I kind of missed that mentality, but it was also a shocker, like a big, big, like, I don't know, surprise for me, like having guys like telling me like to set me their ball because that was something I wasn't like used to back in Norway at all because, you know, we're pretty reserved and like people that kind of step away from those kind of conflicts and I'm like, I am like trying to like make the best plays and I think like having guys like telling me how to play the offense is like a little bit like conflicting, but also I think it's helpful especially when it gets tight in the sets because you want to have that guy that's like really just like confident because when you're playing from 20 all it's just all about confidence and being like willing to crush those balls into the into the court do you see you have more confidence now Cause I, I noticed that when i saw you play you were playing way more loose way more free hitting on two more which i love um <laughs> lefty to lefty but you, it seems yeah, like better you have for way more tree. confidence. <laughs> hey, 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 watch it. Watch <laughs> it. Oh, don't watch it. Oh, Gage hey, is better. the worst. Well, we've we worked on it, and it's still a work in progress. But hey, I would say I definitely got more team. confidence. Oh, 
my god. Yeah. Go, right, go, on go. the first half, I sucked a free ball. Now I'm a lot better. No. Yes. <laughs> Last night you had. I had one free ball. Okay. Yeah, and it was past it like, like three meters. Other. What wow. the free ball overpass again? No, I didn't. Gage, really? Gage is not the greatest at free balls. I've gotten a lot better free balls now. A lot better free balls. I, what about I, the there's a, there's a point in season where I kept messing it up, but now I'm good. <laughs> what about the balls where like you're hitting it from like 35, 40 feet off the Ooh, net? Oh, I like, hit one like, last night. Sun. Do you have any of those? <laughs> I actually hit one last night, actually. Fun fact. I've been, hit, I've been pretty aggressive. No, a thousand? no, I've got one kill so far this season. I've got one kill so far. It was on an overpass dig, but it landed right there. That's but, good but, stats. But back to you here, back to you. So would you, would you okay. say you had more confidence? And then is it... Do you think it's harder? Because it seems like you have really good hitters all around, but it doesn't seem like you have a go-to hitter because you know you don't have like a rattle on your team where it's like, okay, set him 50 balls a night. I remember I, I remember when I went up to you. Do you remember this? When I went up to you one time when I was like, I think it was versus Long Beach. I said, and I grabbed you by the shirt. I remember this. This was the fifth set. I grabbed you by the shirt, and I'm like, you see that guy over there right there? And I pointed right at Rattle. Set him every effing ball and we sat him every ball and then we ended up winning 15 17 now i'm not saying it's the best thing but i'm saying but um, but my question is is it harder now you know like without like maybe like a go-to hitter for sure or do you have to be a little more is it easier being a little more creative and having a little more free flowing to it yeah great question i was definitely used to like having rado just like like when he told me to say rado and he scored i think he had 10 kills out of 15 points in the fifth set against long beach that game ridiculous but anyway like now it's it's definitely like been more of a challenge for me like to kind of find the hitters and like create the best way to score because like it's more like the whole transition from like when you guys were seniors and then you're you're gone and like that was a whole part of our offense including you gage believe it or not you were part of our offense <laughs> but believe anyway it, like, now it's like all those new guys we had like guys stepping up a lot offensively and like kind of finding the role and I think part of that was like kind of also me like working with the hitters, like finding where they're good and using that as much as possible. Um, but it was tough because I think like now, like we're a lot more diverse than what we were before. It was more like, okay, I know I can just go to this guy, like Rado, when we're in trouble. And if we're in, in system, like I want to work with outside hitters in the middles and like as much as possible, like get the middle big going. But like now it's like, I guess it's a lot more like, natural like and free flowing also for, like for my what i can do offensively like with the team and like that i don't have too many restrictions of like where i can go and i feel like i can just go wherever like my intention is and that was, that's going to work out pretty good because i think we're playing a faster offense now than before i mean for sure we're playing faster but also that's like what fits the team better and for us it's been working pretty good so far and we're still like finding ways to like get kind of expand our offense even more but it's definitely been something key focus has been diversity and like kind of diversifying our offense even more and like making it like unpredictable where I'm going to set the ball and like a different, different scores. Cause I can, I can start off like the game setting Demi like four times in a row. Then I will like go somewhere else to kind of bait the middle blocker. And then the, like in the end, I will like set Cole Hogland, who's like probably like the least, like the guy that paid the least attention to blocking wise. And then he will kill the ball. So it's like very, yeah, it's very like spontaneous where I go, but it's also like, based on the plan that we kind of have before the game and that I, we also develop like during the game. No, that's awesome. I, I was going to get into a little bit, uh, like you start getting into the offense and stuff. I was going to ask you, you know, now that you're involved with the Norwegian national team, playing international volleyball, um, seeing a lot of like high level professional players now, what's something that you saw um, over the summer that you've brought back to Hawaii or something that you learned or something that you – um realized um it's just like a really big difference of like international volleyball compared to college i think just like the physicality matureness is like a big thing and just like how emotionally stable professional players are compared to like college players because like in college like you kind of ride the roller coasters like way too easily like i think that mm -hmm. a lot of guys are kind of just like when they're playing bad they're like oh no this is going this is going pretty <laughs> pretty shitty to say it straight out but like when things are going well then things are really easy to like to play the game but when when i play like against like those old guys who play like in in good professional leagues and over the summers i play the european championship qualification rounds like, there's always guys that are really just it doesn't matter how they play it like they're always thinking about next point and like just being emotionally and mentally stable so they can still play well because like they can have the worst game and then they can just look like kind of have the best game after but 
like just finding that balance of like the the mental state of mind when you're playing is for sure like probably the most the biggest difference i can see from like NCAA to the pro pro leagues and national team level just like when you're older you kind of also get more i don't know more calm more more mentally stable to put it that way i think also like watching you gauge i think you also changed a lot from like the way it used to be like very like yelling at the court like with us and like going all crazy to like every single point now it seems like you kind of settled a little bit more which is like good and bad in some ways because you also want to have the energy in the court but also be just being more mature in the game so i think that's like the biggest one mature no, absolutely no i yeah. understand the other thing the other thing i was noticing because i was watching penn state stanford yesterday and then the day before yeah. pepperdine penn state and those are some of the top teams but they popped up a graphic, and it was something like one team had 18 unforced no errors, and the other team had 23 unforced errors. Wow. 26. Okay. I'm like, and I was looking at, like, and I remember looking after our, what we played last night, and just, like, historically knowing, like, what the count is. And, like, even in the German league, which is, a, like, a medium kind of league, it's like, if you, you're erring between five and seven times a, a set, maybe. And if you air any more than that, there's no chance you have in winning. And I'm like, the, I was watching those two games. I'm like, 26 errors in two sets. It was at the end of the second set. And the oh. other, the winning team had 18 errors, unforced errors. I mean, that's the that's also really big. I was talking, uh, Micah. We were talking about that the other day. He's like, if you, when you watch like, these top players, they do not err attacking. Like you get maybe one or two in a match against some of these top teams. Um, it's true. Yeah. Like they they're not airing. Yeah, they get blocked. That's the other thing is for American fans, uh, blocks are not considered errors in Europe, and so people always like, oh, like the in in the U.S. we kind of combine that together, but here you just do not see a whole lot of errors, um, from top players, and so that's another huge thing is like, and that goes to the maturity aspect. I think that you understand it's like understanding situation, decision making, maturity, like. All that sure. uh, plays into the same thing, and so I was just watching. Yeah, I was watching college all this, and I was seeing like numbers pop up. I'm like, damn, that's a lot of errors. Like, yeah. it's hard to no, win. There's, with there's a lot errors. of errors in NCAA in college volleyball. Like, I think we're like probably the team. Like, I can't say for sure, but like we talk a lot about stats in our team and like keeping our errors down because like if you end up like making more than probably like six or seven errors a set, then your yeah. chance of winning the set is probably pretty bad. Like, yeah. we play in ball state like the second night. We had like 17 kills in one set, which is kind of ridiculous. Like we hit like 400, yeah. like or yeah, something like 400, which is pretty good. And like it should win the set for sure. But we also had like eight or nine service errors in one set, which is like the worst we ever had like in the past like 20 years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the set, of course, because we make like so many errors. We still have good stats, but it's like if you make more than like what six, seven, eight errors, like at least yeah. more than one, then. You're not gonna win, so you definitely gotta keep errors down to like be able to yeah. be more consistent and like win the set. Because if we just end up like making errors for the team, you're also making you're making their points easy. Yeah, and it's such a balance too, especially like when you yeah. for you as a setter and stuff. It's like it gets frustrating when the te- when the guys aren't aggressive enough. But there, there's like that balance. And that's what you talk about, like like you're saying with the Norwegian national team. You notice like the maturity aspect. It's the decision making as they get to a higher level, just like. They understand the situation, when they can risk, when they can, like, how they can, ri- like, take risk um, and stuff. And that's something, like, you see, like, at least in college volleyball, just um, where the the biggest jump is. Because even, like, I want to ask you about this, too. Keone hitting 76 in a game. I don't know if I've ever seen somebody in college volleyball hit 76 miles an hour uh, in a match. Match point, too. Yeah, match point. <laughs> I, I want to ask you about that in a second. Yeah. But that's what I say is, like, from like actual speed and power stuff, like you you see about the same. Maybe it's not as consistent, but there's definitely the same amount of like power and speed and jumping wise uh, in college volleyball. It's just the it's just the um, consistency at the next level that you see um, change a little bit. So that's what I tell people like college volleyball. Like you see, it's not super far off from like the speed and stuff you see from serves. Maybe it's just, you know, the entire team hitting <laughs> really hard serves instead of their mm-hmm. two top guys or something like that. And so, um, you know, for you guys, you were talking about, you talk a lot about statistics and stuff. For Charlie, like, for you guys serving, um, even looking at Keone and stuff, like, what does he tell somebody like Keone or yourself who are 
guys who can kind of get after from the service line? Like, what is something that Charlie talks to you guys about um, in the message to you guys and you guys are going back to the line? Um, crush it. I think that's what it tells Keone the most is like, just crush the ball because Keone, he has such a strong serve. And when he hits it, and he like he does it like probably even more consistent than practice is like on average like 70 plus which is ridiculous like he's a phenomenal server but like again like you said like consistency like for him is still about like making that serve consistent because like when he got the right toss like that guy's banging the serve like probably the hardest i've ever seen in my life but like yeah, no. yeah it's ridiculous and especially like when you're in the arena like he just like throws it up there he throws it, like as far into the court as possible and his arm is like so quick he just like goes at it but I think the cues for us, like, because we put a lot of, like, time into the serving. So we take a lot of pride. Like, if we're having good serving night, it's probably because we're just, like, we are good servers. And I think as a team, like, we are, like, definitely, like, top, top team serving-wise. Mm -hmm. But also we have, like, individual guys, like, who kind of fill the role of, like, okay, maybe they just, like, chip one in. Just some more tactical yeah. about the serve. While other guys can, like, go and crush it, like, Keone and Spiros, who has some pretty crazy serves. And, like, even Demon getting six aces against, like, Ball State. That's like we have good service on the team and we always work on it, like tossing the ball into the court, like taking it on the way up is like some really important cues for us. And yeah, just kind of ripping it out and ripping it out. Green light. Gripping green light, light baby. baby. <laughs> he always gets a green light. That's one thing for Keone. He always gets green light. And that is like totally valid because when he hits it, the opponent's got no chance to receive it. And <laughs> even if it's out, it hits someone on the way out. Been there, bro. So it's perfect. Been there. <laughs> but yeah, Talk seventy about... six. That is. Yeah. How was that? Like crazy number. Was it? Was it? Did everybody notice it right away? Like, was it like oh, like it like lit up? Well, we knew it was like it. way like be like above seventy at least, but we knew it was like something high, like up in the seventy five, seventy six. But I don't think I've ever seen like a seventy six for him like even practice. Gotcha. Like that's for sure like the hardest serve I think he ever had. 76 is fast. TJ, yeah, I'm glad I was Falco, not receiving that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. That That's not fun to deal with. Thank God. TJ DeFalco hit a BIC uh, two weeks ago in the Plus League, like 82 miles an hour or something I saw. So Dude. hard. And he blew up 82. a guy. <laughs> so fast. Right and, like, and that's from, and that's like on the net pretty much. Like that's no chance of that ball. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. No. Hey. Yaku, you talked about your Norwegian national team. What's the plan for you after college? It's your fifth year. It's your last year. Indoor, beach. What's the plan here, brother? I think I was thinking a lot about it before college, like if I should go beach or indoor volleyball, but like then getting an opportunity in Hawaii, I definitely kind of settled with going indoor and I just wanted to like see how far I can go. So definitely the plan is to play overseas professionally. Like as long as I can, as long as my knees can hold up, I will play professionally and just see how far I can go in the pro leagues. But that's always been a dream. Like, ever since I started playing volleyball, like, I was watching, like, those, like, top teams in Poland, Italy, like, Russia. And I would be like, I want to be like, I want to be like them. I want to, like, live, live off the sport and just have fun with it. Good man. Good man. And then would you eventually go back to beach after that or after the knees kind of start bothering you more? I think, I think I would, Yeah. We'll see, though. Like, I'm not too sure, like, where I would, when that would be. But I think I would always, like, kind of just play beach for fun. Like, even that's, like, in the national tour or, or in the FIBB world tour. We'll see. But it's always been something, like, that I've always played. Like, I played indoor in the winter and then beach volleyball in the summer. So, like, I always did both, like, equally. Well, you know, anytime you want to get clapped at Outrigger um by anyone just call me and shoey up again and uh you know we'll be, we'll be <laughs> gladly to hand you and fill up another loss just hey just let us know man just let us them? know oh yeah yeah oh yeah, we jacob we get so mad because we'd never serve <laughs> we'd always serve philip and yaka who never gets mad it's like hey what do you gonna effing serve me <laughs> so i know but <laughs> i mean let's just say that when you come back let's have another challenge because you know Philip do it, do it. got better he all those reps oh, he I got bet. so much better like in putting the ball down inside out so i think you're gonna have a hard time so you do like like blocking like blocking philip i don't think it's gonna happen anymore gage hey me and i'm don't don't <laughs> don't underestimate tenacious d and me and brett sheward come on now Come on now. Free ball. Well, it's been a while since you guys played. Like, when we played, because we still have, like, those days where we just want to go to the beach and play at Auriger, play some beach volleyball. Like, it's been Shui, uh, Kanai, Philip, and I, like, we play and 
some more guys who, of course, like coming down and just play beach like on our off face. Last year's two doesn't have the same win rate anymore. He's losing a lot more than he used to when you were there. So I think he misses you. Yeah, he calls me every day. He calls me crying about <laughs> it. But I want to kind of get I want to kind of get into a very hot topic for Hawaii men's volleyball. This will be the last thing before we let you go here, and that is NIL name image likeness. So with that being said, for those of you who don't know, we've talked about a bunch on this show about how athletes can now make make um, money off their name image likeness. They can sell stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They can make cool deals and whatnot. Booty on the block. With Hawaii men's volleyball, that's happening a lot. They're uh, in my in, – actually, we're not. this is not a debate. They are the most marketable team in, for men's volleyball in the entire country. Probably in the entire no, – I wouldn't say world – but entire country for sure. Um, what with that being said, about a year ago, I I texted Jock about like, hey, when we used to do our um, our uh, athletes, uh, some athletes for NIL stuff, we're like, who we want? Who do we want? We're like, we want Jakob. Jakob represents our brand. He's big in the sport. We love him, and I know he'd love to be an Addison athlete. We contact you for about NIL. Now, what we didn't know, what we figured out, and what you told us was Europeans. They can't do NIL because it affects your visa. And I had no idea that was the case. Can you kind of admit, you know the rules a little better than I do. For Can, mm -hmm. can you give a quick kind of brief, like, of what you, before we kind of go into questioning, can you kind of give a brief uh, overview of kind of how you learned about how you couldn't make money anything or did you look into it or, like, what what's the whole situation with that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, NIL is, like, something really recent that they, like, came up with. I think last year was the first year they kind of, like allowed for it so it's like that you can like you're working for a business like you do some kind of work and then you get paid like which can be in money for like the work that you're doing but internationals you're not allowed to like work legally like for somewhere like you can only work at the university and that's like the only legal job you can have like you can volunteer places but you can't just like make money legally like that so like that's a big limitation for us is that like we can't take advantage of the NIL deals and like a lot of the uh, like locals here, they get like really good like NILs like Makua, um, probably Kanai too. I know also like a lot of the guys have something with Bank of Hawaii, which also Ryan Suji is doing a really good job of like kind of like representing all those guys who are able to get NIL. Um, but yeah, but like for us internationals that don't have a green card, <laughs> we should did, but we don't then like that's not something we can we can do like we can still i guess we can still kind of get like some kind of benefit like that other players are getting it but like we're not allowed to kind of sign with anyone to like have those deals which is a big mess but for me i think it's also just like i'm just doing whatever i've been doing for the past years anyway like for me it doesn't change much but i think for other guys it's a great great benefit to help out financially we're like paying for school and paying for a living because that is like a big thing here in Hawaii is like living is really expensive and I think that you yeah, had the opportunity and is really great and like I said I think Hawaii like for sure has the most exposure like the volleyball team has the most exposure like in in the U.S. so it's definitely big for like all those guys who are coming to get those get those deals but for us no can bro no, no can just free samples <laughs> If you I can, if you a, can, I wish I had an L with Foodland so I can get free poke. Oh, dude! I was just about to ask you yeah. if you one place, what would it be? You were Foodland, okay. So you had to have, you had to have art. All, right. all right, since you can't take any of this money, you can answer. The, well, you feel more comfortable out answering this question. I'm sure a lot. Of, well, first of all, ha, did a lot of people come to you, like with the people who didn't really know the rules? You are, you are the man of Hawaii volleyball. Did you have a lot of offers coming to you? Uh, I did get some emails and texts here and there and people kind of approaching me like in person like hey do you want to like kind of support local businesses and I'm like yeah bro I would love to but no can <laughs> so did you so did like, anybody huh no no, no what? You, 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 you go you go okay well there were some brands but I was like nah. I wish I could but I just I cannot so were there if ever... I think I would just buy whatever they have and then I will just wear it and be like oh, okay you got some board shorts All right? I take them sandies and then I'll test them out <laughs> was there but, what's yeah, the was there anyone who ever like offered you like big money like for like, bef like before you got to tell them that you couldn't do it yeah there is one like stripping company that i'm not going to mention name but like or who they were but 
there is some big money involved in that, but I couldn't I couldn't take it. Of course, you said stripping happen. company. Ballpark, it, ballpark. It, all right, surfing. you didn't uh, you didn't you didn't get the surfing. Money. I heard stripping. Surf, but it's like surfing <laughs> and stripping, you know, same stripping thing anyway. Company. Like you're kind of stripping one on the board anyway. Like this weekend, they're having the Eddie for like the first time in like yeah. seven years, which is crazy. I'm surprised like, you're not there. I have to be there for you guys. Hey, <laughs> let's go, a, baby. Okay. Come on, Joe. We come have on, a fundraiser later on. So I didn't want to be late because like traffic out there is just ridiculous. Crazy. You, you wouldn't like, be able to get out. There's no parking. Yeah. Like, why may I? There's no parking at all. It's one single road in and out. <laughs> I guess I'm probably better off ways, just but... walking all the way up for like five hours and then I'll make it. Yeah, in time. yeah it would be ridiculous. Good for you. Well, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. So, how is Hawaii men's volleyball? And I'm not obviously. I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about like the egos and everything. But how has it changed due to nil? Like, is it like is you guys talking about it? Is it like oh, all of a sudden this guy's sponsored by this? Are guys going after certain things where you're like, instead of being like oh, I'm gonna go buy this, you can be like, you know what? I'm gonna go see if I can go get a brand deal instead of buying this. You know, like like how like how has it changed? I think it's definitely changed the game. Um, and for us, like, we didn't really talk too much about it. I think, like, guys that have had, had the deals, like, they're just really fortunate to have them, and they're also doing well, like, representing the the brand that they are. Like, geez, like, I know that he's, like, probably doing, putting the most effort into, like, posting stuff on social media. So you see, That's like, a good. lot of those. Yeah, shout out to G. Everybody go check out G's Instagram page for all those nice videos when he's supporting Texaco and, like, um, the videos that he's making is pretty cool. But is he international, though? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut He's international, but he got the green card. Got you. So that is like the one loophole. If you got the green card, you can still be international. But because G used to live in Texas. Mm, Like a long time ago, he used to live in Texas. So he already had the green card. Which part of Texas did he live in? I did not know that. He lived in Sugarland, Texas, I believe. that is. Oh, Sugarland. Sugarland. Great spot. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it sounds fake. but Seven wonders of the world. Sugarland, Texas. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely changed the game, but we don't really talk too much about it in the locker room. But I know that guys are like, they're just coming in like with all this like epic, like cool stuff. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had that deal too, but I don't. But um, Is it just yeah. like free gas, unlimited free <laughs> gas? <laughs> like, that'd be sick. That'd be, that'd be the... You got SG? I don't know. I don't know what that entails. It's like the, there's nothing with the, the gas. Gr- the like gold the, card? You just show Texaco it. Texaco premium <laughs> gas. <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the uh what's the chipotle card the chipotle gold yeah, the gold card yeah, like yeah. Subway. it's like subway the texaco gold that'd be you sick see, you just see free gas filling up barrels and selling them yeah dude. For a little cheaper. <laughs> dude yeah come on we're getting camera. platinum with the hawaiian airlines would be pretty major oh that would yeah. be that'd be so big i already got the gold i think like everybody in the team got the gold status we always just go to the lounge like anytime we can yeah, got you. Yeah. Like, just lounge. go straight there and get free coffee and, and pog. The so, ultimate poggers. Does anyone have an agent for NIL? And does Charlie push it a lot? Like, is he like selling it to like recruits at all or no? Do you know about that? I guess like the part of where he kind of advertises the program is like that you can also receive like NIL deals because like we're for sure the team that like makes the most profit from, from NIL. Like, we had the biggest like we're all like really close to the community. Like we do a lot of like stuff with, with the public, like where there's like volunteering, we just, and this year they all start with the brotherhood grind. So like for everyone who can have NIL, they also have like some kind of event where they're also meeting business partners and different brands where they can kind of just reach out to. And if interested, like they can make a deal like right there and then. So I think it's a good opportunity for everyone who are from, from the U S it's a really good chance to kind of, benefit and like also like you will get something for it but also you'll give something to the community which is something that we're like really like taking care of and making sure we do because like volleyball in hawaii is a really big thing and everybody like knows who we are so kind of just putting the best version out there for representing yourself and the program and the status is really important to us well that's awesome that's a perfect way to wrap up yaka we just want to thank you brother thanks for coming on man thanks for having me boys man and good luck. And good luck remember. next week. I'll be watching as Modena. Wednesday. Hey, hopefully it's streamed. We'll Wednesday is a big day. We'll see if it's streamed. Wednesday. We leave Tuesday well, morning. Well, this episode will be out by the out. time this. But this episode will be out by the time this streams. So hopefully it's, hopefully it's, hopefully it's looking good for those watching yeah. right now. Battle against yeah, Bruno Ingo. But just remember, if you can't handle the heat, goddamn kitchen. This has been another episode presented by Out of Season.